The average 10-year-old girl is around 4 feet 6 inches tall. Danielle Griffin stands at just 2 foot 11, which is the size of a typical 2-year-old. The maximum she can hope to reach is predicted to be around 3 foot 10. As an adult, Danielle will live her life at the size of a 6-year-old. The best thing about being a little person is that you can hide in small places when you're counting hide and seek. Oh, the worst thing about little people is when you go downtown, it, like everyone stares at them, uh, stares at you, and point at you. She suffers from an extremely rare form of dwarfism, which affects only four in every one minute. My condition is um, called pseudo pseudo achondroplasia, and it's quite hard to pronounce. We found out just before her second birthday. When we found out, it was it was. Um, the world just fell apart, um, blamed ourselves, um, like any parents would do. Um, and my initial reaction was, you know, if there's anything I could do, um, you know, if, if, there's, if there's a part of me that would make a difference, then by all means take it. Danielle's diagnosis was a shock to her parents, as there was no genetic history of short stature in either family. It occurs out of the blue and affects uh, the child. So there's a single change in one of the genes which affects the child, but possibly the parents did not carry it at all. I was devastated. Um, I used to go and have a shower and stand in the shower for 15 minutes crying. Um, just, and I'd have, to, I'd have to make sure I was dry and, and um, I'd calm myself down before I'd get back out of the shower um, so that I didn't let anybody know that it upset me. But it did, and it still does. This is my handle that helps me open the door, and because I can't reach this top one here. Something like sitting on a sofa, Danielle has to climb up, um, climbing onto the toilet. Um, even that, little things like that just, just you know, kind of put a lump in your throat. This wardrobe my dad made for me so I could reach all my clothes and that, so I could get them out and choose my own clothes. But the only problem is I don't know what to wear. Danielle's size dictates that she can't get involved in many sports. The length of her limbs means that she can't walk or run as fast as her friends. But swimming is one thing she loves to do. Pseudoachondroplasia doesn't just affect the growth of the skeleton. The condition also affects the joints. She's just got very loose ligaments in almost all her joints. And that's particularly noticeable at the wrists, which go all over the place, and her fingers. It's also very obvious in her uh, f foot and ankle region. Those are the joints that I've noticed it most. <laughs> In some ways, Danielle's body is behaving like that of a, a toddler's, where she isn't quite as in control of her legs as she perhaps could or should be. They've got the normal amount of muscle tissue um, that, that, that a 10-year-old should have, but it's, instead of being spread over a 10-year-old's bone length, it's spread over, say, a 4-year-old's bone length, so it just appears chubbier and it's almost as if you stretched out the leg to the normal length for her age that her leg would actually be not so chubby. Her condition is not simply about size. Her bones and joints cause her severe pain on a daily basis. Her ligaments are also so loose that she's tending to strain her joints more than most people are but it's for every joint in every direction there is um, uh, an extra, extra strain on it. One of the symptoms of pseudoachondroplasia is bowing of the lower legs. This can be improved with orthopaedic surgery in which the bones are broken and straightened. Danielle had this surgery at the age of three, but the results weren't as successful as she'd hoped. She's decided she wants to have the surgery again in the hope of getting straighter legs and gaining valuable centimetres in height. 
She's come to London to ask her surgeon, Miss Eastwood, if it's possible to have the operation a second time. Fantastic. Now we've not seen each other for a long time. Before we? making a decision, Miss Eastwood needs to look at Danielle's latest x-rays. And then below, where you've not got so much muscle and not so much chubbiness, the bone goes very thin. This, bone? this one looks thicker. Yeah. Then this bit here. Technically, if you like, the operation has been successful in that the bones that we broke are still straight. But I think it proves that the problems with Danielle are more than just curvature of the bones. It's the looseness of the joints that is also causing all her aches and pains and difficulty walking. This hip joint has lots of give in it, so we can go in a long way. Okay. Unfortunately, the decision on whether she can have the second operation doesn't go the way Danielle had hoped. Of the bones, and therefore I'm not sure that I, I at the moment, want to do an operation on the bones of your legs. My first impression of today's x-rays is that actually the alignment of the bones is quite good. And again, the main reason why we're running into problems is the looseness of the ligaments. I could quite happily cry because I thought she should say yes as well, didn't you? Why are you crying? Because <laughs> it's sad. With Danielle's hopes of the operation shattered, she must, for now, accept her body as it is. For the first nine years of her life, Danielle believed that she was the only small person in the world. Then last year, she and her family went to a restricted growth convention, where a whole new world astonished her. When I met all the people similar to me, it made me feel quite happy because I knew people that I'd get in contact with and stuff. It was at this convention that Danielle met Jody, now also 10, who suffers from the same condition. They hadn't seen each other since, but have decided to meet up again. Hello. Hi. Hello, Hi, Jody. How are you? Come on in. Thank you. This time, they've also invited along 10-year-old Lauren and her mum, Sharon. I'm looking forward to meeting Sharon and Lauren because um, I've never seen a mum that's small before. Oh, hello. 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 Danielle and Jody have the same condition, pseudoachondroplasia, but Lauren and her mum suffer from the more common form of dwarfism, achondroplasia, which means there are distinct physical differences between the three girls, something which clearly intrigues them. Can you do this with your hands? Stop that. <laughs> what that? Yeah, that. <laughs> okay. I don't oh, know. Oh, don't. Oh, no, don't. <laughs> okay. I can't. I can do it myself, but I can't watch other people do it. <laughs> oh, oh, like that. <laughs> oh, like that. Um, you can only do that because our joints are really flexible. Well, actually, oh, they're that? loose. My mum told. What's that? Wait, on your hand. What's what? Bone. That. Bone. That. That's my wrist. I it's know. Bone. I ain't got it. Uh, yeah, you've got an ordinary wrist. Cool. Whereas our bones stick out. Ooh, yeah. Let's see who's tallest. I think you're going to be tallest by a few. I think you two are about the same as me, the last. <laughs> you're so afraid. Say, yeah. Uh, ouch, ouch. Ah! Don't do that. Right. Oof, Let me have that between you two. Right. Oof, you. Don't do that. <laughs> go there. <laughs> You go there. No, you go there. She's taller than you. Yeah. And then me like this. What about when your friend, when you was growing up, and obviously we've got this to come through, and your friends went out and they say, Sharon, look, you like the latest jeans we've got on? They're really nice. Do you like my new shoes? Do you like my new top? And you're standing there and you're thinking, mm -hmm. and you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, well, I can't have that. But I can have that. What, when you was younger? Yeah, when I was younger, but you just have to cut, you know, just. You have to alter it. it. I mean, that's yeah. it. Yeah, but like shoes and skirts and Danielle hey, can't I'd wear. I'd never wear a skirt because of your of what you your condition, or it's because you don't feel comfortable in a skirt. So I won't feel comfortable in a skirt. Yeah. I think it, I don't know if it's with my legs or what. 
I do like it spending time with Lauren and JD because they're small so I can see them so I don't have to look up to them like I do because sometimes it hurts my neck if I have to have a long conversation with them. Yeah. So do you find shopping hard for Lauren? Yeah. What I don't know because of a big bum and her legs at the top. Yes, yeah, my problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is a unique opportunity for the girls and their mums to be together. So to make the most of it, they hit the shops. And when you're under three feet tall, it's quite a challenge. I like this. I can't, but I can't reach. I can, if you want it. OK, can you get it down, please? This one? Yeah. OK. Oh, that is actually quite nice. Look at it. Turn around. Turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. That's actually quite nice. Yeah, then. Do you find it a bit annoying when you find uh, like stuff clothes that you like, but they don't fit, and your friends have got them? Well, can I always cut them down? True. Yeah. I just find it hard to fit in the waist. Yeah. It was good today because we're all ten and we're all similar sizes. And at school, all my friends are like bigger than me, so. Mummy, I'm tired and I'm hurt. I'm tired, my back's killing me, and my legs killing me. Back at home, Danielle has learned to cope with being the smallest person in her world, and she's already thinking about her future as a little person. Don't know if I want to get married. I'm not sure whether I'll find someone like me because I want to marry someone like me. Someone small? Yeah. Would you think that would make you happy? Yeah, I think it would make me happy.